Is Mojo the best language of all time? Well, I'm sorry dude, but best isn't really a thing. You are just a victim to clickbait. That said, Mojo does possess quite a lot of features which this supposed best language would have. That's why I spent some time with it to get a feeling of what it has to offer. I wanted to check for myself if the answer to Rust vs C++ will actually end up being Python. Enough jokes about religions though, here is some background about Mojo. Mojo is a new language from a company called Modular, and the team consists of people behind LLVM and other large projects like Swift. Mojo is the first language to use the new compiler technology called MLIR, which stands for Multi-Level Intermediate Representation, which can be viewed a bit like the evolution of LLVM project. The way I understand it, this technology allows the language to be lowered to machine code through more appropriate intermediate representations for the target architecture, which allows the language to be compiled for a larger variety of architectures, including GPUs. The philosophy behind MLIR is that now that computers aren't being twice as fast every two years, there will be more and more application-specific architectures. And now that the AI is being so hyped, this appears to hold true. Now someone please correct me if I said anything wrong here. So high diversity of hardware being a thing, MLIR tries to be the technology that would unlock the potential of these devices so that you wouldn't have to learn a completely new language to program a certain device. And because the MLIR is such a young project, no language uses it yet. So here's where Mojo comes in. Mojo is basically the first front-end for MLIR and instead of creating a completely new syntax, they decided to use Pythons and extend it with static types and a bunch of other nice stuff. I must say that I appreciate the decision not to reinvent the syntax, and especially in the AI realm where everyone uses Python, I suppose this will be a big selling point. Spending a few hours with the language isn't nearly enough time to taste all of its candies and poopies, but either way, here are some of my impressions. While it's not yet a full Python superset, Mojo really does feel like Python with static types, and it somehow also feels more robust even though the language is far from being finished. The way Mojo tackles being a Python superset is by adding its own version of Python's constructs. For example, you can literally just write Python in a def function and have dynamic types and automatic memory management, or you can use the fn function which forces you to use static types and manage memory using lifetimes. Yes. Mojo uses a borrow checker like Rust. You interact with it a bit differently, for example all function arguments are borrowed by default and if a function wants the ownership of the argument but you use that argument again later on in your code, Mojo implicitly makes a copy. I must say that this feels more natural to me than Rust, and when writing Mojo it doesn't feel like the borrow checker is getting in your way ever. Although I am a bit worried that making implicit copies might be harder to optimize sometimes. I didn't spend enough time with it to really get a feeling about that. We'll see. The same relation as the fn function has to the def one, structs will have to classes, although classes aren't yet implemented. With this in mind, I must say that using Mojo feels like I can write Rust in one function, go in the second one and then Python in the third one. That's quite amazing if you ask me. Another thing Mojo does right is project setup and tooling. Although I'm sure quite a lot of functionality is missing, I like the way the tooling operates. The only thing you need installed to work with Mojo is Magic, a package manager and virtual environment tool. With Magic, you can create a new Mojo project by running a simple command and then it installs all dependencies in that directory for you, including Mojo itself inside the Max package. The project is described using mojoproject.toml file, which resembles pyproject.toml a lot. You can see that max package is defined here as well. What really caught me by surprise is that even though Mojo isn't even finished yet, setting up the working environment is already easier than in literally any other language ever. Magic installs the formatter, language server and debugger automatically as well. Using NeoVim, I literally went from 0 to 60 in 10 minutes. That's even easier than Go. I repeat, easier than Go. If you use VS Code, your experience will probably be even better. To be fair, I couldn't get the debugger to work quite right, but still, I'm blown away. I then went and tried implementing three things. A simple lexer for tinyc, from this video here, I checked how a simple HTTP server looks like, and lastly I followed the ray tracing example from Modular's blog post. 
Writing the Lexer, I felt like writing Python most of the time, even though I stuck to using just fn style functions. Although there is quite a lot of stuff still missing, notably enums and some literal types, more on that later. For the HTTP server, I used a library called Lightbug, which was really straightforward to use, thanks to traits. I also verified that it's faster than Python with the WRK benchmarking tool. I just made a single endpoint which finds a bunch of primary numbers on each request. Although somehow Go then beat Mojo by a lot, my suspicion is that Mojo implementation is probably single threaded or something. Or it might be that I just messed all this benchmarking up. Anyhow, it's better than Python and that's basically all I wanted to see. I'll just pretend that Go doesn't exist or something. Finally, the ray tracing example, in contrast to C++, the Mojo implementation looks a lot better for my taste. But I must say that I look at a lot more Python code during work than I do at C++, so take that with a grain of salt. That said, in this example what stood out to me is the access to lower level types like simd, which is perfect for vectors. Also this example illustrates how you can implement your own type and have it feel as it's built in, although this feature is basically already a part of Python. Some of the other things I liked are the fact that function parameters and arguments are a different thing. Parameters are basically compile time while arguments are runtime. Parameters are passed with this generic looking syntax. I like the fact that the language used for metaprogramming is the same as for the rest of the code. I'm guessing they were inspired by Zig at least a bit. I also like the support for function overloading. Python interop, you can call any Python function. And I also like the fact that testing suit is also supported by the provided tooling. I liked it quite a lot. There's also a way of writing tests in doc strings, although I haven't looked at that closely. There were also some things I didn't like, but those are all present in Python as well, so I don't think they are relevant for this discussion. As I mentioned earlier, the language is still unfinished, so there are still some things missing. Most notably, there are no enums, no classes, and you can't write literal lists and dictionaries. There are some small things, like for example while implementing the lexer, I noticed that you can't compare a string with a string literal. You can cast the string literal to a string and it works, that's probably something they'll address in the future. Then there's no obvious way of doing concurrency, and finally error handling is still somewhat loose. It's basically try except like in Python, but at least you have the raises keyword after a function which forces you to handle it. There's an issue on GitHub that talks about errors as values and I really really wish that something like that ends up in the language. Try catch really sucks in my opinion. Personally, I find concurrency and error handling some of the most important aspects of a modern language, and if Mojo gets this right, it'll maybe really become my first choice over C++ because of errors and over Rust because of the async lifetime mess. At the end, only time will tell. I encourage you to try the language out, and I wish Mojo team good luck. I hope it's all smooth sailing to version 1. I'm also interested in your thoughts about the language. Do you find Mojo interesting? Let me know in the comments. Also let me know if you would like to see more videos like this one. I plan on taking a look at some newer slash unfinished languages sometime soon. Other than that, thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you again. Bye!